Hi everyone, it's Miriam with a Y. I've been playing with Marabou's alcohol inks in resin and getting wonderful, fun effects. Like this pretty piece done with Marabou Gentian, which is their blue color, and their violet blue-green glitter ink, and Pinata's Blanco Blanco, or white. Now, if you watched my last video, you saw a couple of pieces being made, including this particular one, with more marabou colors used. And in this piece, we did some swirling for some soft, pretty effects. Well, <laughs> let's see what happens if we do a whole lot of swirling today. <laughs> I'm going to use two different molds, a couple of Marabou's metallic colors, a Marabou color shifting glitter ink, and their gentian blue again. And for my white, I'll use Pinata Blanco Blanco. But if you don't have Blanco Blanco, but you do have Marabou's white, that'll work too. The only reason I use Pinata more often is because it's a little more opaque, so a little goes a longer way, but both will work just fine. And to more easily position drops of ink and resin that I'll mix, I'll use pipettes. Now, I personally prefer these short ones, but just for better control, but if you have these, they do exactly the same thing. They're just longer. You'll need something with which to do your swirling, preferably with a rounded edge so that if you're not careful, it won't scratch your molds. And finally, of course, we'll need some resin. I'm gonna use ClearCast 7050 for my resin. Okay. How about we make a couple of shimmery, sparkly pieces and see what we get. All right, let's do this. After mixing 75 milliliters of resin, I poured some into each mold, about 35 mils into the square mold and eh, about 25 in the round one. The amounts are just estimates. With the leftover resin, I put 10 mils in one small cup and five milliliters in another. Now, if you want thicker pieces, you can certainly add more resin to the molds, but this amount of clear cast is going to make strong, rigid coasters without using up a ton of resin. In the cup with 10 milliliters, I'm adding Pinata White alcohol ink, about 10 drops for a nice opaque white mix. Then in the cup with five mils, I added about a dozen drops of the glitter ink. <laughs> now, it doesn't matter which color you pick, it's just, they're all really pretty, so. I honestly, I don't even remember which one I grabbed. I think it was the blue, green, gold. And the amount that you add is really up to you and how sparkly you want your piece to be. My next step is to fill my pipettes with my resin mixes. Because the resin is thicker than say, like water, it takes a bit of time for it to rise up into the pipette. So what I do is I squeeze as much air out of the pipette as possible. And before letting go, I insert the end of the pipette into the resin and then release. The resulting vacuum will slowly suck up the resin to replace the air that you had squeezed out. And then leaving the tip in the cup as the resin rises to fill that chamber ensures that you don't suck up unnecessary air bubbles. 
once my pipette is filled, I can easily place precise drops of resin exactly where I want them. Now, I mean, this is not critical. I'm doing this mostly to show you this technique. After putting white resin drops along the periphery, I add some metallic inks to the fun. <laughs> you can do this in any pattern you like with whatever colors you like. I just picked these two because, you know, they're my faves. <laughs> Now for our first round of spiraling. And how about some glitter ink in the middle on top of some metallic pink? Now keep in mind that you can stop at any point along the way. You don't need to do as much as I am going to do in this piece. I'm just going to go for broke with this to see how far we can push this. <laughs> and also, because just a few drops and a few spirals, I don't think that would make for a very interesting video. So, so tell me in the comments if you just want me to make like, you know, really simple Petries and stop. But I think we're just gonna have a lot of fun with this one. <laughs> I'm switching over to the round piece for a bit, and I'm starting off by adding little drops of the glittered resin mix using the mini pipette. My hope here is that when I swirl these little drops in later, they'll add a subtle sparkle to the other side. Now, of course, you can just mix a whole bunch of glitter ink into all the resin that's in the mold for a very sparkly piece but I'm hoping for just hints of glitter here and there on the reverse. I'm gonna leave the extra sparkly aspect for this side, what I call the work side, the side that we can see right now. And then the other side will be a little subtle, at least that's the plan, but you know, you never know exactly what you're gonna get with a Petri, but that's the goal. And let's add a few drops to the square piece too, cause you know, why not? And now some white drops too for the round piece. We'll swirl that all in, in a minute. And then back to the square piece and some more metallic color. I love watching this stuff. <laughs> and then we'll follow that with some glitter. Okay, a lot of glitter. <laughs> Cause glitter, good. <laughs> and the glitter ink floats, so it's really gonna stay on this work side. It doesn't seem to ever wanna sink. So I'll, what I'm gonna do is I'll try to leave some clear areas so that we can see all this glitter peeking through on the other side. So I'm not going to saturate the top with color everywhere. I'm gonna leave some clear areas, or at least try to. And remember, the plan with these is lots of spiraling to see what we get. So to that end, I do some more spiraling now. In the round piece, I'm going to just stick to white, the gentian blue, and some glitter. <laughs> so I'm using the same colors as the piece that we saw at the very beginning of the video, except that this one's going to be very spirally, very swirly. Since I've got some white left in the cup, let's use that up. And of course, we're going to spiral that in too. And there's a teeny bit left here, so I'm gonna just throw that into the square one too. Okay, and because glitter is fun to watch, <laughs> how about a bit more of that too? <laughs> All right, I, I admit I'm a little addicted to dropping glitter on resin. <laughs> it's just too much fun. 
And then to end it all, I'm going to pour the leftover glitter resin mix along the periphery of the round piece. And I don't think I'm going to spiral that in. I think I'm going to see if it can stay as like a frame of sorts or see if it wants to migrate toward the middle. I don't know what's going to happen. So we'll see what happens. And then when I'm all done playing, I run a torch very quickly over the top to pop any bubbles that might have happened. And then I'll leave these to cure for 24 hours. I am a little giddy about these two. <laughs> they are so pretty in person. Oh my gosh, they're so sparkly, which you know I'm like mad, madly in love with. I don't even know which one to start with first. I think I tend to start with the small one first, so I guess we'll go with this one and keep with tradition. This one, it's hard to see, so I'm going to have to tilt it a little bit this way because the contrast here is so great that I don't know if it's going to show up well. Maybe if I shield the light a little bit, yes. Then you can see the glitter ring um, that I poured toward the end. It's so pretty. And also the sort of overlap of the white onto the blue. It looks so delicate and gauze-like. It's just lovely. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, let's see what we get on the other side. I love these silicone molds. They release so nicely. Okay. So we definitely have some interest on the side. Let's see. You guys, look at that. Oh my gosh, it's like a like a oh, a beautiful paradise in there. Oh my word. Oh my gosh, these are just getting prettier and prettier, I think. And yes, we definitely have some sparkle on this one, on, the, on this side. It's not like a ton, but it's definitely there. So if I tilt it back and forth, you should be able to see it. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Uh, I love how we can go from a really dark blue on this side, which is really pretty, and then we get sort of like a more baby blue on this side. Uh, I'm in love. I'm just in love. Okay. Dun -da -da -da. <laughs> oh my gosh. Now this one I played a lot with. That was the goal, to see how much can we play and still get something pretty. So I really, really love these corners. And I don't, down here, we got this little wavy thing going on, which I think is really cool. I don't know how that happened. I guess this, I don't remember if this was where I ended the swirling, but I really like this little bit piece right there. And definitely very glittery and sparkly on this side for sure. Oh, uh, look at that. And then in the metallic, it's really the blue that shows up the absolute best, if I think, in terms of metallic. That metallic is just, just awesome. Okay. Dum dum. Dum 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 dum. Again, fun sides, definitely a lot of interest. Dun, 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 dun. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So the glitter that we're seeing here is really the glitter from this side. 
So there's a lot of transparency here and here and here. So we're seeing through it. Oh my gosh. Ugh. Look. So you can see there's a lot of open space. And then look at here. Look at that. How delicate that is. Oh my word. I get asked all the time what I do with these or what you can do with these. Now, personally, I make them for the sheer enjoyment of the process. Now, my collection is definitely growing. So if you'd all be interested in my putting up some of these for sale, let me know in the comments. If you've got a favorite from a previous video, feel free to message me about it on my Facebook page. I'm putting a link to that on the screen now so that you can ask about owning it if you'd like to purchase one that you saw in another video. I'm happy to have some of these go to you guys because eventually I will need a bigger house to store them all. <laughs> now, as to what you can do with yours, they can be displayed in stands. You can also mount and frame these in shadow box frames, for example. Or you can make similar ones and use them as coasters. So like make, you know, four of the same color scheme. And then you've got a set of coasters or make six or eight or however many. Let your imaginations guide you. There's a lot you can do with things that you make. Now the hard part with some of these is deciding which side you display if you choose to mount them in a frame. But if you've got that problem, then you probably made a really pretty piece. <laughs> Let me know with a thumbs up if you liked seeing these come to life and tell me in the comments what you'd like us to try next. What experiments have you been wondering about? What color schemes or shapes? I think we should definitely go bigger next. <laughs> what do you think? Remember to come show off your work, ask for advice, or get inspired in my Facebook group. I hope to see you guys there. May your creative nature shine this week. Please stay safe. See you soon. Bye now.